In this video, I'm gonna show you how to dial in and craft your own metal guitar tone. So the first thing to consider is what is the context and what tuning are you in on your guitar? What are you playing in? If you're playing in extremely low tunings, your guitar tone and amp choices will change a little bit. But if you're playing in a higher tuning and you're doing a lot more articulations and a lot more harmony sort of things, your decisions when EQing and making your signal chain may change a little bit. So I'm gonna walk you through two scenarios one where it's a little bit high in the tuning and one where it's super low tunings, like low as you could probably go. This is one track here I've got. You just heard the guitars and there was three different amps I was using there. And you can see the tones varied slightly. I've got three amps that I'm using and I've got a set of cabs that I'm using for one set as well. You don't need to buy any of these things. You can use all free plugins. I did a video if you wanna check it out, just up here in the cards. If you wanna check it out, how to get a free metal tone that actually sounds pretty good and comes with some pretty cool IRs that sound nice as well. So you can follow along if you don't have anything you can just try those ones for free and get a sound and do the similar thing in this video. So the amps that I've got in this example, the first one was a Fortin and the second one here is Neural DSP and this one's Archetype Petrucci. I'm just using the amp here. I've turned the cabinet off on this one and also I've turned the cabinet off for the Fortin plugin as well. So the cabinets I was using for those two amps is the Kali Oversized Amps by Get Good Drums. In the third guitar, I had these all turned off and I just had STL Tone's Tone Hub turned on they got their own amps and cabs modeled into the plugin here and it's all built in. So with the Tone Hub, you can't turn the cabinet off. So I just ran that through their cabinet here. I had the PV amp, the 6505, and the cabinet here is EVH 2x12. The reason I have three amps, I'm just showing you that you can use multiple amps to get the same sort of signal chain and you can kind of combine different amps and different cabinets as well if you want to kind of mix it up and get a different tone for yourself with the exception of tone hub where it's sort of the cabinet and the amp baked in but you can still do some tweaks to it as well if you want to so there's still some customization which i will show so the first thing i always like to have is a compressor in the signal i'm just using the free reaper one here depending on your amp sim it may not come with a compressor or any pedals this amp sim by neural dsp the Fortin one doesn't have a compressor plug-in on it, but this Archetype Petrucci one does, it has a compressor here, which I just bypassed, but you could use that if it's built into your amp sim. Same with STL Tone Hub. If you go to the stomp box here, it has a compressor, which you can use, which is bypassed on this one as well. If I'm playing in a lower tuning and I'm also pitching down on the guitar, I like to compress a fair bit because you kind of lose a lot of signal and clarity as you go a little bit lower. The second thing in the chain here, I've just got an EQ. I've just got a preset here. It's this one that cleans up the distortion, but this is a move that I would do anyway. It's rolled off here about 92. So you could adjust this depending how low the guitar is, but, but you'd have to adjust this the lower you go. So on this tuning here and drop F, it's pretty good at 92 right how it is. And I've just got a little notch here to get rid of that 4K fuzziness that always comes through. One important thing is you always want to make your guitar tone reference in the mix with especially with the bass and the kick from the drums. So you can actually hear how it's gonna affect and if you have any mud build up. So I'm gonna play a little bit of this song here. I'm just gonna hear what it sounds like with these settings just as is. EQ loaded up, the amp loaded up here with a cab picked here that I've got these four mics here, which are ribbon mics. Starting off, that's pretty good. It's gelling pretty well with the other instruments there, especially the bass and the drums. So next in the signal chain, if we open up this plugin app, it runs the chain through the top here. So we can see the very first one here is gonna be our pedals. So obviously our pedals go in before the amp. So this is where you wanna add some boost pedals or any distortion pedals. So I've got here a noise gate set on this one. And I've also got this grind pedal, which is a mimic of the Fortin 33 pedal, which they don't make anymore, I don't believe. So I have the gain dialed back just a little bit here. These are the amp settings I've got for the Fortin here. 
Now this amp's really good for really low tunings. I've got the gain up on one of the channels here, pretty high and dialed back on the second one. So if we jump to the other amp that we have here, which is the Petrucci Archetype by New York GSP, we've also got the gain here. See it's dialed back, it's only got one gain knob here. So what I like to do is dial back the gain as much as I can to see what we can get away with. So we're gonna get more note definition with less gain. See, we don't need a ton of gain. We can dial it back. So next in the signal chain is the cabinet. And like I said, for the neural DSP ones, they do have some awesome cabinets in here as well that you can use on, and you can light up your own IRs. But I'm using the Get Good Drums Kelly oversized ones because these are really good. I just wanted to try out these tones and they sounded pretty cool. So the so one thing that's gonna shape your tone the most, which you're gonna see here, is gonna be the cabinet and the microphones. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the Get Good Drums Kelly cabs. I'm gonna switch back to these Fortin ones here, which is a dynamic 57 and a condenser mic here, one for each side. So I'm gonna take a listen and see the difference. First, you're gonna hear the Get Good Drums Kelly cabs. You're going to see with that change there, it's going to affect how the tone is. So that's one of the biggest things to consider when you're trying to dial in and pick your tone is think about the cabinet choices and the IRs you want to use and those microphones. So hearing that, I could hear some things that I want to remove and sculpt with an EQ. So if you're not getting the sound that you want, you might need to try out some different IRs. If you're trying all these crazy EQ moves to try and make it fit in the mix with the instruments, when this app here, you can actually move them around with the neural DSP ones, which is kind of cool. And you can also move the mic around in the Tone Hub app here as well, where you can move the mic around and get different sounds. So you can experiment with that and see what works with your mix if you're not getting the sound from the start on your starting tone. So what about if you have some really low guitars and maybe some things come up, some resonances that you need to get rid of. So this guitar here is in a really low tuning. So it's in the same tuning that Humanity Last Breath plays in. So what their guitar sounds like, it sounds like this. And I tried to match it the best I could with my own amps. So super low, crazy and compressed sort of guitar tone. And there's a lot of issues that can happen trying to mix super low guitars, especially pitching them down as well that low. So I just played some stuff on the guitar and tried to match the tone as best as I could. So this is what it sounds like. So my guitar was in drop A and I pitched it all the way down 11 semitones. And this is where I was using the Fortin because the Fortin is really good for lower tunings and also had that grind pedal as well. So before in the chain, I had the pitch shifter down. Obviously you wanna put that first in the chain because you wanna affect the signal at the start, not the end. Otherwise it's gonna pitch down all the distortion. So I had this Pro-Q EQ on, that was just to see if I was in phase or not. I wasn't using that for anything. 
but I do like to EQ some of my DIs at the very start of the signal sometimes, and that does give it a whole new tone, especially if you've got dead strings or old strings. You can do some EQ to at the start of the DI, and it can give you a shaped tone from the start, which is a cool thing as well. Or you could use a plugin like this one where you can do a DI match. So if you play the signal, where you can capture the DI signal and then you can load up profiles or create your own profiles and then load up a different one here. This is in drop E. We'll see what that sounds like. It's already super high gain on this one. So it's giving it a bit more gain on this app. You can see the signal that it's adding to it. So that's why it's kind of getting a bit overdone, but this signal's already super compressed. That's why I don't have this signal on there. But if your guitar tone needs a little bit of a boost, you can use these DI match sort of things as well, or EQ match to a different tone. Next in the signal here, I have just that same compressor thing, but this one's pretty hard on the compression. And now these are the amp settings here with a bit of gain. Gain's a bit higher on this one, because once again, I wanted the signal to be completely slammed and the cabinet turned off on this app here. But then we're going into just some EQ. So next up, I'm using the Kali oversized cabinets IRs again, and I'm using all the 57 mics here for all the different cabs. And there's a bit of a blend going on. So there's a bunch of weird EQ moves here, but this is what you want to do when you have um, these super low tunings. You need to like craft them and sculpt them a lot. So I'm going to show you some of the notches and see what they sound like when I bypass them. You can see like when they bypass the whole entire EQ, it just gets really muddy which is pretty typical when you're working with super low guitars because it's basically working like with a bass. So you can see with these two bands at 1298 and 1725, these have some really annoying frequency build up there that just wanted to notch out. So that's going to be completely unique to what guitar you're using, the amps and everything as well. So the best way to find those annoying frequencies is to get an EQ band like this and just make it super thin like that. So you can make it like a razor thin and you can sweep through all those annoying sounds and try and find what rings out to you. That's the best way to do it and just kind of sweep through it. And what you do is you'll notice some frequencies. So if I do it now, we'll probably try and find something. So you can see even just adding that little move there at that 5,000, that even got rid of some hiss, which may not be a problem right now, but it could be a problem with the mix with, you know, the cymbals and the vocals and everything else. So you just want to keep that in mind when you're trying to craft your guitar tone. So when you get to the end of the chain, you can just experiment with some EQ moves to see where you like boosting some things because you've cleaned up the signal and you just can add some more broader EQs to kind of give it some lift if it needs some air up in the top, or if you need to cut some of the low mids, if it's getting too muddy and clashing with the bass. So that's the basic signal chain that I like to use when I craft my guitar tones and the process I go about it when I try and sculpt a guitar tone from a raw guitar tone to one that I like to work with within a mix. So, so if you want to see some more stuff like this, be sure to subscribe if you're new around here and I'll see you all in the next video.